Welcome back to the Raven. Let's talk to Lady Westmacott. Hello. Lady Westmacott. Already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. Why are you wearing a pink bra on the outside of your shirt? What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Well, you know, maybe next time you'll get lucky and you'll get rid of the old little old ginger kid. But probably not. You're probably stuck with him for the rest of your life. Sorry. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No, I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. Fair enough. I mean, when I do, when I hear the na the term Master Thief, because it says the Raven, legacy of a Master Thief. I guess it's because I played the Thief games growing up and stuff, but I always think of someone who is a master of getting something and then leaving with little to no uh, bloodshed or otherwise being seen. You know, a true shadow who doesn't kill like the way this murderer has been doing. Especially how in the first cutscene we saw him use a bomb and killed that poor guy with the great mustache. I felt bad about that. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone. Or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone. But who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Yeah, I guess, I think that's the game turning to us and giving us a hint. Because the game wants us to figure out who the murderer is, apparently, without having to rely entirely on uh, the game just revealing it to us. And presumably, we can expect the game won't use the cliche of re revealing someone at the end, so that suggests that it's someone we already know. All evidence points, I mean, all everyone's suspicions point towards the violinist, and that's why I think it's not the violinist, because that'd be too easy. Although the violinist is someone who has kind of shifted himself and is a bit suspicious, which is kind of, again, why I suspect it's not him. So, I don't know, I, I have to keep in mind that pretty much anywhere the evidence is going to be clearly pointing is probably not going to be the answer. So, hopefully I can figure it out before the game reveals it to us. Anyway, continuing on. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so 
relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered, but if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. Shucks, I should have cancelled the stupid uh, steam pop-ups. I hate that. Sorry, sorry. But yeah, you know, I kind of have the same attitude as her about a lot of things. <laughs> like, if there's like a big storm coming or something, I'm like, oh, I hope the storm is just a hell of a storm because there's not much I can do about it either way, but you know, may as well see some awesome lightning and thunder and some winds blowing and some trees toppling. Why not? Maybe I'm just an asshole, but whatever. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday, and he impressed me, but there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And do you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelna. Of course. I really haven't informed you about anything so far. And we don't intend to anyway, of course. I assume you wouldn't anyway, so... Yeah, let's go down and talk to the good doctor. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I thought there was something important on the desk there, on the table. Cause it looked like there was a kind of a pinkish white cup that was kind of glowy or something. I don't know. Whatever. Probably nothing. Neither Doctor Gebhardt nor Constable Oliver can keep up with Legrand's pace. But in contrast to good old Robert, the Doctor doesn't let himself get roped in for the long haul. I wonder what would happen if Legrand dragged him out of bed for another investigation. Well, we do kind of have to bother him to find out about who gave us the champagne, right? Dr. Gebhardt locked the door, and until I have good reason, I won't wake him up. Something tells me that he wouldn't be amused. Okay, well, maybe we have enough information as is, perhaps. Unless someone else has appeared. Come in. I shall do that. Hola. He looks Constable. very serious. Talk about the tranquilizer. About the tranquilizer. Who gave you the glass of champagne? It was Captain De Conti. You're sure? He doesn't deny it, but he also says that the glasses passed through many hands that night and that everyone had access to the champagne. So it could have been anyone. Maybe the question isn't who put the poison in the glass, but rather who it was they wanted to poison. Smart. And who were they trying to poison? Dr. Gebhardt? The captain got the glass from him. Hmm. An unconscious ship's doctor. That sounds like it would be more used to a murderer than a drugged constable. You think so? Did the murderer have reason to assume that his shot might not kill the victim immediately and, and that Dr. Gebhardt would be able to save her? You're right. That's improbable. <laughs> My ego is just searching for reasons for them to want to kill her and not me. Good job, Zelna. I'll be in touch if I uncover more clues. Very well. All right, we can go up and check her room now. I forgot about that. All right, well, let's go up and do that. Because that's kind of what we've been looking forward to, isn't it? This is what I've been looking forward to. He's had quite the long stride for a short man. Very impressive, Zolner. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Time to go. Let's see. I'm not sure how we're going to crack the seal. It's just, like I said, <laughs> like duct tape. Just tear it. This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. Take a deep breath. Well, surprisingly little blood. Huh. I guess I'll get to the blood last. That's how I roll. 
The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. Can we check inside? Yes. Do tell. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by the explosion. Yeah, otherwise it would have been quite a mess, huh? An impressive piece. But I don't think it'll get me anywhere with the murder investigations. Fair enough. Check this alarm. See if the seal's Another broken. Alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken. But there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. You could check it for fingerprints, see if there's any recent... Well, I suppose that there's no fingerprints on the weapon, so... Uh, most likely the, the Raven or whomever had gloves on, so I guess it doesn't matter. A note. Well, notepad. Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first class cabins have them. So we are going to do this, as I suspected from back from the beginning of the game. Yep. I knew it. Ah. So, so she knew about him. Unless this was done by the murderer to throw us off the case. Seems almost a bit too convenient. Well, since the message isn't here anymore... It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board and I will expose him. B. The Baroness seems to have known the murderer. And that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message, otherwise he'd have said something. Maybe. Unless it is Legrand. Dun dun dun. If it turns out to be Legrand, I'll totally count that as me figuring it out. A big, ugly, and impractical vase. If it had a wider opening, one could at least use it as an umbrella stand. Okay. And? Hmm. Can't see anything. Wow. Heavier than it looks. <laughs> Feathers. Aha! Aha, uh -huh, what? Why were the down feathers tossed in the vase? Or is there anything else in there? Not sure what there'd be. Hmm. Nothing special. Although, the fuzzy. it seems like one of the feathers was scorched at the top. Literally burnt. I'd better take it with me. Okay, so maybe he shot the pillow or used a pillow as a muffler, but that doesn't make any sense because we all heard the shot, so it was, didn't do any good if that was the case. There may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow to reach in with my hand. Then turn it upside down and shake it. There may be, there may be something else in the... Okay, do I have anything that I can fit down there? Not yet. All right. Oh, maybe he didn't give me the down feathers. Maybe he just gave me a container. Or, excuse me, I mean, maybe the inspector didn't give us a, the bullet, as I thought he did. I guess he just gave us an envelope. All right. Covered? Hmm. A tape recorder. Must go with the built-in speakers. Probably part of the cabin's furnishings. Wow. Yeah, this is definitely the 60s. Next time on The Raven, we will continue exploring the Baroness's room and hopefully find a few more clues to suggest who the killer may be. See you then.